Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Shadia Rafage. I'm a board certified veterinary surgeon. This video is part two of our inter intervertebral disc disease series. I hope this video will add to your current understanding of this condition in dogs and allow you to make an informed decision regarding your pet's care. Remember to always follow the recommendations of your veterinarian or veterinary specialist closely. Today we'll focus on intervertebral disc disease surgical treatment in dogs. And just to get you up to speed, Below is a link to part one of this series that focuses on what causes intervertebral disc disease and what types there are, as well as how we can diagnose the condition. Spinal surgery is intended to remove herniated disc material and it is the most common neurologic surgery that I will perform. Once your dog has been diagnosed with disc disease and the imaging confirms the diagnosis and also confirms that your pet is a surgical candidate for the condition, surgery will then, be, will then be pursued. Now, because diagnostics such as CT or MRI require general anesthesia, and because surgery obviously requires general anesthesia, I typically will perform the CT or MRI under the same anesthesia as the proposed operation. The surgery is, itself is called a hemilaminectomy. A standard hemilaminectomy for a single disc herniation in a small breed chondrodystrophic dog will range between 30 and 60 minutes in duration depending on the complexity of the case, the size of the patient, and of course how bad the, the disease is. Just as a reminder, there are different types of disc disease in dogs, and we are focusing on type 1 the center one. If you take a look at the picture above, the center disc is herniated and putting pressure on the spinal cord. Now if you can remember that picture and transpose it on this drawing, the top arrow is pointing to that same disc that's herniated. And you can see that the bone that normally covers the spinal cord and the disc has been drilled away. This is known as a hemilaminectomy. The ventral slot procedure will be discussed at a separate video. So the bone surrounding the affected area of the spinal cord is removed and the associated spinal nerve roots are gently probed, freeing them from the disc material and removing all the material that we have access to. I then place a fat graft in that area that'll help protect the patient from forming scar tissue in the future long term. Now spinal surgery, just like in people, is a very delicate operation. And it's not without its complications. These complications include, and are not limited to, temporary or permanent paralysis, permanent dysfunction, difficulty urinating or defecating, development of pressure sores or bed sores, developing pneumonia, and having recurrent disc herniations in the future. That being said, not every pet is considered a surgical candidate. And those pets that have multiple disc herniations or protrusions, or those that have very mild signs or mild herniations that show more chronic disc herniations, such as type two, as seen here, these pets may not benefit from surgery, nor may they be surgical candidates. All of these potential outcomes are going to be dependent on your pet's clinical signs, what the surgeon believes is best is in your best interest, and what the CAT scan or MRI shows. For those pets that are not considered surgical management, medical management will be discussed in great detail with you. Our next video will be focused on this topic. Now some veterinary surgeons will only perform the procedure on your pet if the signs associated with this disease are considered moderate to severe or where those signs based on MRI findings are severe. I tend to be a little bit more aggressive so if your dog is showing signs of back pain and a disc herniation is confirmed on the CAT scan or MRI then I prefer to intervene early with surgery as we do know the prognosis to complete recovery meaning having a dog that is fully functional and pain-free, is better when you can intervene early on. 
So a dog that undergoes MRI and spinal surgery that has mild signs has a better outcome and a quicker recovery than those that are more severely affected. That being said, the complications still exist to have permanent dysfunction. And so you have to decide as a pet owner what you think best suits you and your pet, given all the information that you know. The MRI or CAT scan can also determine prognosis. Some pets we will determine based on the MRI that their risks are too high or their chances of walking again are very low. Of course, these difficult decisions will be made between you, your veterinarian, and the veterinary surgeon as to what to do next as the next step. Now check out my next video discussing intervertebral disc disease medical management. Thank you so much for your time. I do hope this video did, it, did add to your current knowledge of this condition and allow you to make an informed decision regarding your pet's care. Always follow the recommendations of your veterinarian or veterinary specialist. Please show your support by subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with others. This is Dr. Shadia Rafidge. Let's take care of our pets.